Jamie Roberts crashed onto the scene in, in November and uh, played against Scotland as well as any old crash ball centre could with the ability to, you know, play as well. It happened really quick for Jamie, did it? It did indeed, yeah. He had an amazing last year in school. Um, he captained Wales schools under 18s out in France. He came back and he was invited to go with the FIRA squad then uh, at the end of the 19 World Cup, which was in South Africa. Played in every game out there, I think, for them. He came back from that and got invited to train with the under 21s. And they had a World Cup about two, three months later. He phoned me up one night to say he'd been selected and uh, he was over the moon. I had to bring him down a peg or two, to be honest with you, because he had A-level exams in June, the right. same time as the Under-21 World Cup. And one of his big attributes was his physicality in the game, you know. But he played at full-back, not, uh, not in the centre, yeah. where he's been selected for the Lions, of course. Cardiff Blues, Wales, and now the Lions, man. Are you, are you, getting, are you getting used to wearing the red now, is it? Well, the no, red of Wales and everything. <laughs> This isn't Lions game, unfortunately, no. Where were you the day you got the call? Were you glued to Sky Sports with your mum, your dad, your uncle, the cousins, your aunties? Or? No, no, I was uh, with one of, my, uh, one of my mates in the car, just listening on the radio. No way! Yeah, we took a drive and uh, just listened on the radio. So and what was it call. like? Yeah, did you crash the car or did you go for a point? Or what well, you no, we, we sat still, like, just listening listen to the radio. We read the names off so slowly, like, it, yeah. Was, uh, yeah, it was painful, really. What did you ever it? think you'd be a Lion? Did you ever dream of it? Or is this the best you can do? Um. It is the best you can do, I think, in rugby, and you're just getting that test side and win a test series, but um, yeah, it's pretty crazy. Do you think you're ready to go to step it up one more notch against the Springbok after such a long season? Definitely, I think, you know, it's a challenge. It's a challenge for everyone, isn't it? That's the whole tour, it's just a huge challenge, and um, you know, all the boys have just got to dig in. I think, I think he's excellent, excellent. He's also bright, so he's keen to, you know, expand and play other types of game, and. Um, but I just wonder whether Jamie Roberts and Brian O'Driscoll might get something going in midfield. I just think that has a little ring to it. Mm -hmm. Did Lee Byrne learn his angles on this on this tarmac? Well, if he didn't, he'd have very great knees, wouldn't he? Yeah. The last self-made rugby man. In what, in what way? What do you mean? Well, if you look now, we'll have uh, four or five games going on, all sidestepping, all kicking. This is where he learned it. This is where, and, but these boys are playing on hard cement. There's not a one football boot between them. There's not a blade of grass. There's lads creasing each other here and tackling on cement. Oh, that's, yeah. that's South African conditions, my friend. He, this is where he learned to play on the hard ground. That's it. Watch him. All kicking, all sidestepping, no passing. When he came to school, did he show a good aptitude for the subjects at a uh, uh, class, the he academical always. side, or was it just getting out for PE? Oh no, he's always a good boy. He liked his subjects and uh, did what he was told. And how good was he when he spotted him as a, as a student down here? How good was he on the school team? He uh, was very much a mystery man. We knew he was big when we first saw him playing for the Scarlets. As I said, a self-made man. What's this, why is there good rugby players brought up in this area? What's in the water in Bridge End? It's What's the in the schools? It's the nature. Um, they're playing it, they're loving it, they're allowed to express themselves. Sidestepping is the name of the game. Show off the best you can. So when did Lee start at the club? Uh, he started at uh, under eight, so now mini rugby, almost at the beginning of the mini rugby, which formed about 20, 21 years ago. And then I first took his side on at the age of under 13s, and I coached him through under 19s before he joined our first team. Was he always a fullback, or when did he start out? Uh, up until the age of 16, he was a podgy little number eight, right? Very good tackler. Uh, uh, he was in a side that we struggled for numbers in that side, but they were all great mates and stuck together. And um, none of them were potential Oxford graduates. But uh, at the age of under 16s, he decided to switch to fullback, which is obviously the position he occupies now. And uh, he really then decided to take his rugby seriously and become the player that he is now. Is so it a proud moment for you and for Bridge End that he's he's a he's a lion? We're very proud of Lee. He's our first uh, British lion. I was British, British and Irish lion. British and Irish lion. Irish and British lion. <laughs> Irish, and British lion. <laughs> Irish and British lion. He cuts a line which nobody else does. He just has an instinct for arriving at the right time, you know, and um, he's quick. He's got a huge left boot. I would think if he's fit, then he will be the starting fullback. <laughs> Good player. Good. 
he's bigger than you think. You know, you stand up alongside him and you go, oh my God, you're, you know, you, you sort of look small and you're not. Have you tried the jersey yet? Yeah, we've, uh, we were lucky enough to uh, put the jersey on for uh, photos doing the, the Six Nations. So, um, yeah, put it on and um, I just can't wait to get out in uh, South Africa and have a, have, a, have, a, have a win. How do you think that Eddie will, you know, he's got a good squad of players? Yeah, definitely. I think it's a very strong squad and um, I think the players go in, obviously, the, the right ones to go. And um, hopefully we'll knit together quickly and... Um, do, do the job out there. Could you imagine, listen, if you got on that first 15, first game, spring box? Oh, it's huge. Oh, well, and, um, what would that be like? Well, it's, it's, it's massive, isn't it? It's, uh, to, play, to play for your country is, is great, and uh, to represent the Dutch and Irish Lions is just phenomenal. It's, it's a unique occasion, and um, like I say, I uh, just want to get out there now and uh, hopefully have some game time and uh, prove my worth, really. I stopped in and at the end of yours, Matthew, who runs a good chipper downtown, he told me he likes fish and chips at the weekend. Oh, yeah, definitely. In, in, Ireland, in the crispy cod. He's the there every every week. Yeah, he likes his cod and chips. He does, you know, he's carrying a bit of weight, but that he needs that in the front row, doesn't he? Yeah, now and again, I treat myself to wear old cod what, and chips. And, yeah, well, uh, what did you think when he became a British and Irish lion? Awesome, absolutely unbelievable. I couldn't believe it. My father phoned me and said Matthew had been selected, which was very, very good. Um, obviously, the Irish boy's been playing very well, so I wasn't too sure if he'd get him, but obviously he was good enough for uh, the boys to pick him. Was he outstanding as a young lad playing around? In the, did yeah, he play his local school and then the local club? Local school, local club, and then he went on to the Pont Pontypridd. Then he went, played a bit for Triochi Zebras. Then he went on to the Celtic Warriors, which was a semi-professional club. And then obviously from there, to the he went to the Scarlets, and he's been there ever since, and uh, he's doing a good job down there. Tell me this, what does Matthew Reese? does he come up here on a Saturday night? Because in Ireland we love a snack box, snack. chicken and chips, yeah. I'm a snack box man. He comes, I think most sometimes after games, he picks up a bit of fish and chips and then goes home and uh, relaxes with his family. Listen, can I have three Matthew Reese specials? No problem, coming up. Go on. Well, listen, if you've got this Saturday off, you can be going to get a cut of chips, because you won't be getting any cut of chips in Durban or Johannesburg. Oh, you're right there. I think he's quite a force, you know, and I think he's uh, off, the, off the field. I think he's, he's one of those and sort of says, ah, oh, you know, people write us off. Let's show them. The one thing he has got in his favour, he's very quick, and he's got good, he's got good powers of uh, evasion. He's got a good sidestep, and he's got good ball handling skills. This man is Martin Salem, who's the PE teacher who moulded and trained Ma uh, Gethin as a youngster. Do you remember the first time he came into the school? Y yes, we do. Uh, you know, Gethin was, uh, he was, he was a very, I, w I would say athletic, he was, he was a rounded centre. Right. And th this, is, this, is, this is his starting position at school, he played at centre. Right. Which explains why his hands, when he plays now, uh, are as good as they are. Right. He was out in the backs and of course he was a real handful in there. And then as he, as he progressed through school, um, he, he, he developed in terms of physical stature and then worked his way into the back row. Yeah. And then by the time he would got to the age of, of 17, 18, um, he'd found his niche in the front row. Wow, it's funny. Um, but his, his, his development you know, physically was, was phenomenal. He was a very able sportsman. Uh, right. Football player, loved this football. Yeah. He used to play centre back, are you cricket, are, basketball. Are you telling me you're allowed to play football in here? Oh, of course we do. All right, I just wanted to... Football is very strong in this area, right. and Gethin is a keen footballer. You know, and I think he's one of these frustrated centre forwards who, yeah. who unfortunately was put at the back. But um, you know, when you see this, the, the, the hands his development in terms of his skill base, it's because he played the basketball, he played the cricket, he played the football. And so, if you remember this, the, the, the try that Gethin scored against yes, Ireland, Ireland I know, yeah. the dribbling skills he showed there, now that doesn't come by chance. Well, Gethin and indeed Martin Williams were both products of the Ponderby schools and then our youth team. Mm -hmm. And their potential was pretty obvious from the word go. Uh, Gethin became a Welsh youth cap, as did Martin, and they came straight into our first team squad. Uh, Gethin uh, was clearly a, a prop for the future because to prop it, um, senior level when you're only 19 years of age you had to be something special and he was. I think Gethin Jenkins is playing like no other player on earth. But we, um, you know, Wales against England this year he made 16 tackles. 16 tackles we all win. And since then he's made 20. So we look back on the England game, Gethin I'm sorry you're not up to scratch here mate. You know you're only making 16 tackles. And he's not just making tackles prop on prop. He's out there, he's tackling anything that comes his way. He's agile, he's quick on his feet, he's, he's a, he is a one-off rugby player. Roland, do you remember when Lee Halfman came down here? What age was he, 13, 14, as a youngster? <laughs> he was about uh, 17, first of all 17, 17, 18. He was playing in the Ospreys Academy there. And, uh, yeah, I think he had about four premiership games, a couple of friendly games. 
you know, and uh, we had him in the week here to do his kick in and stuff like that. So yeah, he, he was here, great kicker, you know, somebody who was prepared to listen um, and really wanted to learn. But what is it? What's the key to Lee Halfpenny? Is it just his outstanding pace, or you know, he he's he can get himself out of trouble, can't he? he? You know, he's got a he's got a great ability to play the game. You know, rather than you know, not just the pace of it, but you know, he'll he'll hit lines in the middle of a load of traffic, he'll just hit those lines, confident to doing it, taking the ball, you know, carrying the ball hard, runs hard. So it, it's it's the ability to play the game well. Um, you know, we, the raw talent was there, right? Um, but you, you just didn't, you know, physically you thought that, you know, perhaps that could be something that gets in the way. But, you know, within the, in the space of the last 18 months, to see how he's physically grown, his rugby, Playing ability is great. Everything is just, yeah. you know, it's and, and it has, as you said, meteoric rise. You know, he came from the 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 cradle, straight out of his cot, put on a head guard, and became an international rugby player. He's elusive. He's quick. He thinks about it. He can place kick. He can kick out of hand. And it seems to me that once he's made a mistake, he says, right. Now I make amends. Tell me this: Have you looked at videos? Have you? You know, obviously, know the Springbok boys. Yeah. Wales played there last year. Yeah. Um, what do you think? It'll be a nice, no physical contest. It'll be just nice, <laughs> soft rugby, will it? Oh, I'm sure. Uh, you know, they're, they're going to be taking their heads off and things. You know, because that's, that's the typical of the Springboks, a very physical side. What are you looking forward to most? The first big tackle, the first good kick, the first little break. In terms of the game, of just. Whatever it comes, maybe the first carry or first yeah. tackle. I had to tackle Spice uh, in my first uh, game against Wales for Wales. Uh, are your family, are you bringing half the country down with you? Is girlfriend coming down? Everyone's going to go. It's like it's yeah, going to yeah. be such no. a big deal, isn't it? Oh, yeah, you know, it's just, you know, it, it may only happen once, you know, and the, everyone's making the most of it, you know, because only, the end day only comes around four years. Martin Williams, pleased to meet you. Nice no, to meet you. One, one nugget to another. <laughs> is that what the boys call bit you? Bit more, yeah, nugget, yeah. yeah. Bit more than me, though. Well, you know, Paul O'Connell is another nugget. Yeah, is, uh, we're taking over, I think, are we? We're at, we are a dying breed. Some people say to me there's only 5% left of us in Ireland. Yeah, 100 years apparently we're going to die out. So now I want you leading from the front. I'll the nuggets, the Paul O'Connell and you. <laughs> we'll try our best. Because you're on a world stage for yeah. Redheads. Tell us this, it's been a great season. Has it been a long season for you? Um, no, personally for me, it hasn't been too bad. We've been, um, you know, I've played, I think, only played three Magnus games um, and about 22, 23 games in total, so I'm pretty fresh. And, uh, because that, you were obviously involved with the Welsh boys. Yeah, with the Welsh team and you know, the squad used really well at the Blues year, so um, yeah, at the moment I'm feeling quite How did that good. Six Nations pan out or did the Grand Slam or the Triple Crown? Who, what happened there? I can't. I can't even remember. It's one of those teams. Drop, spawn, lucky drop goal right at the end. Was it? Think, Which team won it though? Yeah. Which? Uh, it's only Irish, so. Was it? But we hadn't won it in a, bit, <laughs> we hadn't won it in a thousand. Yeah. <laughs> we went two in the last five, so we, we yeah, give yeah, it a yeah. I could see a few beer bellies. <laughs> you know, he's playing still to the highest possible standard. That's one area where I think the Lions are going to be strong, is in the back row. There's, there's not many players that will get three Lions trips. So you obviously have been like you're excelling in that position and for your country and for your club for, for a long time. Um, do you think you're a better player than you were in the first tour? Yeah, I think. Do you? Yeah, definitely. Second, I think, second. Yeah, I think I'm better than the. I think you keep learning. You know, the older you get, the wiser you get. And uh, <laughs> it's, uh, you know, physically the game has changed so much. You know, when I was eight in, years. In, in what way? Just everyone's so much bigger, faster, stronger. You know, we look at the wingers now. They, you know, they'd be a, yeah. sec, sec, a second old 10, 15 years ago. You know, they. 6'4", 16, 17 stone. The trouble with Martin is that um, you need the forwards to be doing one thing and you need the three quarters to be doing something imaginative and inventive and wide out there. And you need Martin Williams to have freedom to have a bit of the forwards and a whole load of the backs and to play that sort of game. Uh, if, it becomes a, if it becomes a brute fest, then it won't be for him. Are you bringing in many family? Or is yeah, there'll be a few friends going out there. No, the family, i got young children, so it's a bit of a long flight hey, for them. So. I've got young kids, you're escaping, aren't you? <laughs> no <laughs> more, no Eight more. Eight weeks, peace and quiet. Get yeah, in yeah. there. Yeah. Sleep, yeah. yeah. Good night's sleep. So, um, no, they're not coming over. There'll be plenty of friends uh, over there as well. Well, I hope you don't get room with Rob Carney because he's got the smelliest stocks in Ireland. Is he really? Oh, oh, yeah. I don't know Rob yet. But. <laughs> and uh, Paul O'Connell's amazing farter, but he's a captain. He'll have his own room. <laughs>